Hi Seahawks, it's me, Mrs. Deshane. Happy December! I'm feeling quite festive this month. I love this time of year. Um, and you guys can probably notice something different about my look today. This necklace, that's what you noticed, right? We're gonna be making these necklaces out of one of my favorite things, pasta. And we're gonna be reading a book about pasta as well. You might be familiar with it. It's a really fun one. It's called Strega Nona by Tommy De Paola, who's one of my favorite authors. So after we're done reading, we'll get to our craft. So you should have gotten this little avocado bag uh, in your box this week. You're gonna need this bag and then either a piece of regular paper or some foil if you have foil and then some of your glitter glue or any type of glue really. Um, but I know I've given you guys like five or 10 of these things so far this year. You might have some left or you can use regular glue. So let's get to our story and then we're gonna get to two different crafts today. Strega Nona by Tommy De Paola. He's the writer and the illustrator of this book, which as you guys know, means he wrote the story and he's the artist who made the pictures. In a town in Calabria a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Strega Nona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went because Stregonona did have a magic touch. Look at them lining up. <laughs> she could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands. Oh, I love potion. <laughs> and she was very good at getting rid of warts. Very important. But... Stregonona was getting old, so she needed someone to help her keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. And big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Stregonona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her, and you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. That's Italian for thank you. One, the one thing you must never do, said Stregonona, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. I have a feeling he's not gonna listen though. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work and Stregonona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Stregonona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Stregonona standing over the pasta pot. Oh, look at him, he's peeking over. She sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Oh my gosh, I wish I could sing a song like that. Then Streganona sang, Enough, enough, pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. Oh, he must like pasta too. And Stregonona called for Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't get to see Stregonona blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. What do you think the three kisses do? Hmm. And this is what happened. The next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly, a pot that cooked all by itself. You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said, such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook, and then they'll be sorry. Hmm. 
That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought, because two days later, Stregonona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden, feed the goat and milk her, and for your lunch, there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Stregonona, said Big Anthony. But inside, he was thinking, my chance has come. See, he's thinking of the pot. <laughs> so bad. As soon as Stregonona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup, boil enough to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Well, it's working. He remembered the right words. Aha, said Big Anthony, and he ran to the town square, jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone, get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Stregadona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but they ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Stregadona's, the pasta pot was so full it was beginning to overflow. Look at that. Wow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pot was never empty. Wow. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot, so simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. <gasps> but alas, he did not blow the three kisses. Uh-oh, what do you think that means? He went outside to the applause of the crowd, but Big Anthony took a bow, and he was so busy listening to compliments from everyone that he didn't notice. The pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look. And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Stregonona's house and was coming out the door. Eee! Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but pasta kept pouring from it. Uh-oh, he looks a little stressed. <laughs> Big Anthony grabbed a cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover and Big Anthony as well and spilled on the floor of Stregonona's house. Oh my goodness. What a mess. Stop, yelled Big Anthony. But the pasta did not stop. And if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road, and all the people were running to keep ahead of it. Oh, man. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. Oh no, look, they're putting up a barricade like something to block it and it's still coming and they're like getting scared of pasta. We are lost, said the people and the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town. And it certainly would have had Stregonona not come down the road home from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what had happened. She knew. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses. And with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, thank you, thank you, Stregonona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor Big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. 
They were mad at him. Now wait, says Streganona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Streganona said. And I want to sleep in my little bed tonight, so start eating. Oh my goodness. And he did. Poor big Anthony. Look at him. Oh, he's eating all the pasta. <laughs> Oof. But she got to sleep in her little bed. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this story. So now we're gonna get to our crafts. So we actually have two today. Um, partly because I made a little mistake with some of the pasta that I put in here. And so I figured we could still use it for something else. So you get two projects for the price of one. So let's go ahead and take out our little package and very carefully so that it doesn't go everywhere. Cause you want to be able to use it, right? Not be searching around for it all over the floor. So take out your pasta. Get a pasta. Now, <clears throat> can you guys tell me where pasta came from? Where Stregonona lived? In Italy. Yeah, some of you might be Italian. My son is Italian. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys some of the different kinds so you'll know which ones we're gonna use for which of our two projects today. The first one you'll see maybe is the biggest one. It's called uh, rigatoni, and it's the biggest one in your packet, and they're green, and they have like swirly lines on them. So you got your rigatoni. You have these ones that are called farfal or bow tie pasta. I think that must be Italian for bow tie. Kind of looks like a little butterfly, maybe. Um, maybe it means butterfly. Then you have these little teeny tiny macaroni ones. Let's see if I'm. They're like little circles. You've got these ones that have like a pointy side of it. It's like a little tube. Those ones are called penne. And then you have these smooth ones with no lines at all that are called ziti. And they kind of look like a little, a little tube of paper towels. I think those are all the kinds that I put in. Um, oh, and you also have the elbow pasta. I forgot. These little tiny kind of curly ones, they almost are bent like an elbow, which is why they're called elbow. They're kind of like the ones you see in mac and cheese. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do after we've got our pasta out is we're gonna be making these necklaces and then we're gonna make another piece of art with our foil or paper and glue. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab the yarn out that was in your bag. You'll notice that on one end of the yarn, it's kind of floppy and the other end it's straight. Well, that's because I took a piece of tape and wrapped it around the end for you so that it would be easier to thread through your pasta. Now, the first pasta that I showed you guys, the biggest one, that uh, rigatoni, I actually don't recommend using this one, and that was my mistake, for your necklace because, as you will see, because it's so big, some of the other pieces actually will like slide inside of it. So if you put it on the necklace, they might cover up some of the other ones. So we're gonna use this bigger one for another project because I didn't wanna waste it. <laughs> so what you'll do is you'll get all the other ones that are a little smaller, the ZT that are straight, and these little uh, tiny macaroni guys, and then these penne ones that have the lines on them that are more pointy. So those are the ones you're gonna use for your necklace. You can take that taped end, which I don't know if you guys know this, but I learned somewhat recently that the end of a shoelace that's stiff like that is called an aglet. So I made you your own little aglet on this string. I learned that from watching Phineas and Ferb. It's a very good show. All right, so I'm going to make a pattern on my string. Some of you guys might have already learned about some patterns, like an AB pattern, which means you do one thing, then another. A, B, A, B. Like you could do that with colors. For example, red, green, red, green. Or you could do A, B, B and do red, green, green. You guys have a few colors here. You have little blue macaronis, little red macaronis. So you can make a pattern or you can just go crazy with it. Um, I also don't recommend adding these little elbow guys 
on the string. They're a little too curvy. You can try, but I think they're a little too small. We can use this in our second part of this project today though. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my necklace. You guys keep going. Um, if you have enough, you can fill up the whole string. You can see on mine, I just did a little bit to be more at the bottom of it, but your neck is also a little bit smaller than mine since I'm a, a full grown person. Does anyone else think that these ones kind of look like hot Cheetos? Don't eat them though. They don't even smell good because I had to put vinegar on the dye. Don't worry, the smell will go away if they're still stinky by the time you guys get them. All right, I'm adding lots of colors so far. I'm not really doing a specific pattern because I just want it to look kind of, kind of crazy. Add a little bit more. So once you get to a place where you feel like you have enough different designs and colors and pieces on there that you want to be finished, I'm going to add one more red one for some symmetry. I will show you how to tie the end of it and you can put it on. Now, if you have some other yarn or string at home, you can make your own aglet on the end by just wrapping some tape very tightly around it, like put it on and then wrap it up like a burrito. And then you can make more if you have extra beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is so I have the bottom of mine done with about 10 or 12 beads so if you're still going that's totally great take your time no rush you can pause the video and come back when you're ready to tie it so when you are ready to tie it you're gonna line up your two ends like this and make a little loop on top so that it almost looks like like a little ramp you would put on Hot Wheels or on a roller coaster. And then you just take the loose end, you put it right through that circle. So see how I kind of looped it through like a little pretzel? You just pull it nice and tight. If you want it to be a little shorter, do it a little lower, a little higher for someone who wants it long. And then, you can cut these a little bit if you want them to be shorter. And you can just wear it and like be a super stylish elf like me. You guys can even give this as a holiday gift if you celebrate any holidays that are coming up soon. This would make a nice little something you can wrap up for a grown up in your life or a sibling maybe or a neighbor you care about um, or your teacher because they're awesome. Um, so. I hope you guys had fun making the necklace and now we're gonna move on to craft number two. <laughs> okay, welcome to part two. You guys get an extra craft this week because when Mrs. Deshane made all this green rigatoni pasta, I didn't realize it was gonna be too big to put on the necklaces and it would cover up all the other smaller pastas. So now you get two crafts. What I'm gonna ask for you guys to get for this is either a sheet of foil from your, your grown up or just a regular piece of paper. And then if you guys have any glitter glue left from your prior projects, you can use that or you can use um, any kind of regular glue will work. So what we're gonna do is grab those big pastas first that you have left over. And you're gonna do a real simple pattern of counting out three, two, and one, which I know you all know how to do. <laughs> So we'll do three on the bottom, two in the middle, and one on top. Boom. Does that look like a shape you guys recognize? It's kind of like a triangle, or what we're gonna call it is a tree. You can add another one that way if you want. So any other pieces that you guys have left that didn't make it onto your necklace, I have a few left. I'm going to just add those in the middle of those other ones. You have some little bow ties. These ones I tried to make them purple, but they look a little bit brown. That will make a good tree trunk. Then you have these little elbow ones that were a little too curly to go onto the strings. You can add those in too. And you have these little guys, these little circle ones that you can add maybe as little ornaments. 
make it look however you think looks perfect for your tree that you want to make. Hmm. And every single one of them will be unique, you guys. No, no two of you are gonna make the identical tree, which is kind of a cool thing. That's what makes art so special and neat is that everyone makes it a little bit their own. Mine has that hot, those hot Cheetos. <laughs> That's what those look like to me. It turned out a little darker. All right, so then what we're gonna do is grab one of your little pens of glitter, or if you're just using regular glue, you can do that as well. And you're gonna just lift up each piece and put a little dot. You can either do it on the paper or you can just put it directly on the pasta, whichever seems easiest for you, or both. Then it'll really stick together. Oops, don't press too hard like I just did. You can do a little dot, or a little line. So you just wanna make sure that wherever you're doing this, that you can leave it there for a, a little bit of time, maybe an hour or so before you move it so that the pieces don't come loose and roll around. And then this will be a beautiful display that you can save to decorate for winter when we see festive trees everywhere, or if you celebrate a holiday, some of you guys may have one like this in your home. I have like four of them, some of them are very tiny. I just like to decorate. So we'll just keep adding these. And you know, another fun thing that you guys might be able to do if you do still have more of this glitter glue is you can go back over some of the ones that you've put down and add a couple little drops of the glitter. Make it look like there's some extra sparkle on there, some ornaments or some lights that are glowing. Add a little bit of extra festive touch to it if that's something you think looks cool. I do. All right, so add a little more. I'm almost getting to the top of my tree. If you guys aren't moving quite as fast as I am, don't worry about it at all. I already practiced this before I made this video so that I made sure I knew what I was doing. So this isn't my first time, so it's okay that I'm going a little faster than you maybe. <laughs> Actually, I don't want to use that one. Oh, the song that came on right now is called Oh Christmas Tree. That's perfect for what we're doing, huh? All right, there's that. And this one. And then on the top, I'm going to make a tall one. Every time I get a Christmas tree, it always seems to have one really pokey part at the top. And I'm gonna put a little bow on the top of my tree too. So that it kind of looks like a little, a little angel. Just like all you guys are probably behaving like angels right now, right? For your parents, grown ups, and everyone else. Oh, I'm gonna go back in and add some red glitter glue. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then I'm gonna make my initials too which my first name starts with the K and my last name starts with the D. So this is Duchenne. Lots of red, lots of glitter. You guys probably caught on to the fact that I really like glitter. You wanna add some? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect, I love it. Thank you guys so much for doing these crafts with me. Um, I'm gonna do another one next week for your last week before holiday break so you get two in a row to send you off. And I can't wait. See you soon. Bye Seahawks. Mommy, I